Okay, this is part two of simple CPU architecture. Oh boy, this is this is the hard stuff now. Okay, so first we're going to look at the ALU. Looks a little something like this. Um, so what happens here is these arrows here. These are our arguments. So when we're doing something like add R1 and R2, this might be R1, this might be R2. So those are our arguments. ALU op determines what we're actually doing. So if we're adding, I don't know why that's not okay, whatever. Um, so if we're adding, then ALU op, it's a three bit number that determines the instruction we're doing. So if we're adding, that will be zero, zero, zero. And then, for example, if we're doing an OR, a bitwise OR, and that's zero, one, zero. So whatever goes into ALU op determines the instruction that we're doing with our two arguments. This is our condition code Z. This is our condition code N. The output is from the operation. So if we're doing add again, if you add R1 and R2, if the number ends up being zero, then this will be one. If the number ends up being negative, this will be one. And then of course, the result comes out here. Okay, and uh, these numbers here that I'm gonna circle in green, these indicate how many bits are going inside. So here for our data in, it's eight bits, as we know. Eight bits, three bits for our ALU operation, and outcome eight bits. Okay, and as for memory, we have the Harvard architecture is what it's called. And the Harvard architecture, architecture means that we have two separate memories. We have one memory that is dedicated specifically for data. So things like numbers and all that that we're dealing with. And the other one is for instructions. So that's like if we have a series of stuff, so add, sub, shift, and then our arguments here. If we have a little program, then our instruction memory will hold what instructions we're doing. So here it'll be add, here it'll be subtract, and here it'll be shift. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna delete all that and take that out. An example of the use of the instruction memory is increasing the program counter. So here we have our instruction address going in. This is our PC block, and it gets written in here. So this is called PC write. So we're writing to the program counter right now. And then the address will then pop into our instruction memory. So the instruction memory stores the program counter and tells us what the instruction is. So then the instruction comes out. So when we're increasing the program counter with all of our commands, because remember we increase the program counter with all of our commands, we have our PC block here. It will go into our instruction memory. and then our instruction will come out. But how do you add? Well, we know that we can add with an ALU. So we have a little mini ALU up here that's capable of addition. And since we're always increasing our program counter by one, one of those numbers going in will always be one, and then the other one will be the program counter. So we're adding one to the program counter every time. And then that result, comes back into the program counter so that we keep increasing and increasing and increasing with each cycle, with each command. Okay, so I'm going to scooch this to the side and we're going to expand it. So right now we're looking at the data path for the add instruction. 
So we have another block here, and this is going to deal with our registry files. So what goes in are your two arguments from your command, and then something called register write, or I'll just put a w there, or reg w. So up here and here are our arguments. So this might be r1, this might be r2, and then reg write will determine which k register we're, we're writing to. Sorry, which k register we're writing to. So one ends up coming out of here out of these registry files is the data that we can manipulate right away. So since we're doing addition, <laughs> that doesn't look like a D. Okay, there we go. Since we're doing addition, we have another ALU here, which will add up our two raw pieces of data that we can now manipulate. So this thing's doing addition. And remember from the last video, we worked on condition code, so we have to test for condition code. So we're checking for N and Z again. And now our result goes back into the register files because remember, we have a destination register. And then here, like we talked about at the beginning of the video, we have our ALU operation, and for add, it's just 000, so that's always going to be 000. So now we're going to do another example of a data path. Okay. Um, I kind of wanted to do load and store, but I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. Upon looking at these notes that I have um, on my second monitor here, I have no idea what's happening in the load and store data path. Um, so if anyone wants to comment um, with an explanation on how load and store could work, uh, <laughs> feel free, because it looks like a jumble to me. Um, so I'm going to just focus on branch for now. Um, both add and branch will give you a good foundation to kind of figuring this stuff out for an exam or a project or whatever. So first things first, we always want to increment the program counter. So we have our ALU here and one goes in program counter goes in there okay good 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 so I'm kinda of doing this process a little bit quicker just because we've already gone through it and this is a multiplexer here and we have 0 and 1 so the big thing with the multiplexer is this this part here the multiplexer is going to decide if we branch or not so if we use value 0 here, value 0 is going to be our just normally increased program counter. That means we didn't branch. Now if it's 1, that means we did branch. So if we recall, we have to do our sign extend of immediate 4 and add it. We have to add it to our program counter so we can jump. Okay, where's my blue? There it is. So our program counter will go into our instruction memory as usual. And our instruction comes out. We only have one argument right now, which is immediate four. So it's there's kind of like this weird threshold here because usually we have some arguments that come out of our uh, instruction data here right so since we only have the one argument it just kind of transitions right away into immediate four and then we can just put in a block for our sign extend so we have sign extend to eight bits here eight bits come out go into our ALU right and the other number is our increased program counter as we did in the last video ok 
Okay, so that's our ALU. So that's get that gets added. So that's a plus. That's a plus here. These ALUs are only doing addition. And this will be our one value. So let's retrace this. I'll use a highlighter. So we start out with the program counter here. Things go normally, except that we need to add one to our program counter as usual. So that goes into the LU, one gets put onto the program counter, and it goes two ways. It goes through here, and it goes through here, but we'll go over that in a second. So our program counter gets stored in our instruction memory. Our instruction data comes out we pull our argument from the instruction data, which in this case is just immediate four. We sign extend to eight bits, and we add it to our increase program counter. So we're doing PC is equal to PC plus one, plus the eight bit sign extended version of immediate four. And then this comes out, goes, all the way here. This one comes all the way here. So now there's a decision to be made. We have to look at our select lines. If you don't know how multiplexes work, I have a video on that as well. It was one of my first videos. So check that out. So our select lines will be PC select. And PC select will basically determine what the branch is. So if we're doing BZ, so we branch if the thing is zero, then PC select can honestly probably just be BZ. So PC, oops, PC select will be equal to Z. So if Z is zero, then we're just increasing the program counter as normal. So we'll write that down. If Z is zero, then we're just doing PC equals PC plus one. But if Z is one, then PC equals PC plus one plus sign extend eight of immediate four. Okay, um, let's see, is there anything else here that I should be going over? No, I don't think so. Okay, that's it. Um, so thanks for watching, I hope that helped out. I'm really tired right now, I didn't get much sleep last night, so I hope that everything was clear. Um, yeah, feel free to subscribe and comment and all that, and uh, good luck studying.